Hello everyone. Uh, I thought I would do a follow-up tutorial um, on my tutorial regarding writing into Logic 10 with the mouse. Uh, because when you get to the piano parts or any part that has polyphony, like an organ or a harp or even a guitar or even a double stop violin, um, we have to do special things in um, Logic in order to notate it properly. So let's take a look what we've got here. I put in, and I just simply played it on the keyboard. Um, I played it in to the metronome so it would come out nice and neat, and I did quantize it after that, the parts. But here they are on the, uh, on the G clef alone, the treble clef alone. You'll see the style says treble. Um, <clears throat> And But if you look over at the piano roll, which I really, as I told you in the last tutorial, is a very important, uh, I think, window to have open when you're working with notes like this that are kind of unknown. What voice are they in? Uh, we'll take a look at a spot here just so I can show you what I mean. If you look at this note over here, it's a quarter note. These are measures and these are quarter beats. He's a quarter note. But the little E here is an eighth note. So obviously, the ED here is part of the what looks like the alto voice. So what's the first thing we're going to do? It's a so soprano, alto, tenor, bass kind of thing. So we're going to change the, the um, style to piano, one, two, slash, three, four. And you probably thought it was going to lay it out all neat now, but no. We haven't defined anything yet. All of the notes you see here are on MIDI channel one. So therefore, it's it's forcing all of these notes that are here up into at the best it can to the G clef and soprano voice. But we know that they're that they're not. Let's zoom in a little bit on this uh, first chord and just take a look at it. Soprano, alto, tenor, bass. And if you look over in the uh, if you look over in the uh, piano roll, you'll see that they are all, in fact, four beats long. But this guy is a soprano, and he's on MIDI channel one. So let's let's run it down. One, two, three, four. And let me put the alto voice on MIDI channel two. Put the tenor voice on MIDI channel three. And the bass voice on MIDI channel 4. Now that's more like it. That's what we really would like to see. Although here you still can't really tell that they're soprano, alto, tenor, bass. If I were to grab them all over here, let's just show you something. If I grab them all, make them all half notes, you can now see that they are alto, soprano, alto, tenor, bass. The stems on the half notes kind of delineate that for us. But let's make them whole notes again. There we are. Now, I really don't want to have to go through this score uh, note by note and put everyone individually onto these voices. So we have our tool up here, the voice separation tool. And by holding down the command key and clicking, we can make divisions between all of those voices. If I bring the mouse higher, it's going to separate one from two, which is soprano from alto. If I put it near the middle and hold command down and click, it's going to separate the altos from the tenors, or two from three. And if I put it down here, it's going to separate three from four. OK, now, the first thing I'm going to do with this whole thing is grab these bass notes, because they're so obviously at the bottom of this of these structures and if you look at some of them like this one that looks like a half note but if you look in the piano roll that is really uh it's really a whole note but because it's being constricted by the fact that of all the notes the half notes the smallest so it makes that conform to all of these half notes i'm going to draw i'm going to click down here make the separation from three to four, which is just going to force anything below the line down to voice four. See my line? I'm going to draw it through, and you'll see what happened. I'm going to do the same thing on this line. Get way down here, make sure the separation is between 
three and four. Good, and we'll go down here and do the last one. Okay. There we go. All right. Uh, these don't look right. Oh, wait. Yes, they are. No, it didn't look right, and that's because I didn't go low enough. I clicked too high. So now I've got to go down here and make sure they're on four. I knew that because I saw rests, and they couldn't be right. Okay. Anyway. Now, the next voice I might peel off might be the uh, tenor voice. But I have to be a little more surgical with this one. I'm going to assume that all of these are tenors. I'm not going to assume that. Uh, let's take a look at this guy. Whole note. Well, there, therefore, all these guys are going to be soprano and alto. So let's see if I can strip those off. I'm going to separate th uh, two from three. That's exactly right. Two from three. Let's see how good I can draw this. That looked pretty good. Not bad. Down here, this one's easier, obviously, two from three. And three is going to be, I'm going to assume it's just the bottom note here. And that one, and nope, not him. And him. Okay. Now, notice I was w w wondering about this guy. This is where the, uh, the uh, he was a whole note. So uh, <laughs> these guys are obviously the altos here and the soprano on top. Uh, one more line, uh, two from three, that's obviously three, I'm going to guess him, and definitely him, and that should take care of that. Okay, now we have to separate our um, soprano from our alto. So let's take a look here, and let's see what kind of a shot I am up here. Uh, you can always blow this up, remember, makes it a little bit easier to do that. But right now I'm trying to work in this, in this area, let me open that up again a little bit, there we are, okay. Let's see how I do. I'm going to separate one from two now. So I'm bringing the mouse way up here. Hold the command key down and, and a little higher. So that guy's not in the way. Okay. Good, good, good. Now here, these two guys are alto. And only the bottom note here is the alto. And that note is the alto. And take a look. Now, how did I know that? Well, by looking over here, you can see the notes that I just did. That was the alto line. The soprano line, you notice, is right above it. And these two guys, the, the, the little D, E and the D here, going to the A, because the soprano took a big leap down also. So this guy is a soprano note right here. Oh. Then let me see how I do on this line. Bring it way up here again. Make the division. Okay, here, here, and split the difference here. And make sure he, see the top note, was a whole note over here. So I knew that the bottom two were the alto part. Now we'll finish it up here. Okay, that a little higher again. Okay, yes, yes, and yes. And the bottom part, this one has a really tricky part. What are the alto parts here and what are the soprano parts? Well, let me guess what I think is the soprano part. And look over here. Yeah, the, the, it's the, it's the uh, alto part here that looks like it's kind of busy. But these two notes are clearly soprano, so I've got to draw the line through here. So let me do that. And that guy's an alto note. So let's go up here again, hold the command key down, and draw our way through here, and then here, and then there. And that should do it. Yeah, not bad. Okay, so that's kind of the, uh, the drill. Let me uh, shrink this up a little bit so I can see it better. Maybe we'll play the thing so you can hear it. I can make it a little bigger than that. Okay. And let's go to the beginning. Hold the Option key down and click here on the clef, and it brings our playhead there. And let's take a listen. And no, that is not the whole piece. There's quite a bit after this. But anyway, I hope you get the idea. Different lines of music, different situations, but uh, 
they go to the, the MIDI channels matter. And there's one danger that if <laughs> you were to import a file and it had uh, notes on, let's say, MIDI channel 10 or something, here's what happens. Uh, well, let's put that on MIDI channel 10 and you'll notice that the note just simply disappears. Uh, that can be a danger. There's a thing called the event list. And if you go to the event list from the window, uh, you'll see here that uh, all of these guys are on one, two, or three. And by that one being on 10, we're not going to see them. And the reason we're not going to see them is because in the layout, when we show the staff styles, uh, these channels have been assigned to those voices. So if you would, if you were to import a file that, that was on uh, channels 9 for soprano, 10 for alto, 11 for uh, tenor, and 12 for bass, you would change those channels here, and they would all show up on their various channels, and the polyphony would look right. Okay, uh, but it, if you're writing into the program, just set that style. And when you enter new notes, uh, just put them, uh, uh, just make sure they're on the right MIDI channel if you want to delineate the parts. Okay, so anyway, uh, that's enough for today, and uh, we'll see you soon. Be good.